That's as low as I can go, low power. Got a big slab of tissue here. And I know I can't get it right side up because it's all multiple pieces oriented different ways. This is not normal skin, right? Goodness. Well, first of all, what's going on here? Here's this epidermis. And you can see the dark pigment here. This is a darker skin patient. That's why they have diffuse basal layer pigment. So sometimes uh, if you have a small biopsy and you're not given the history of what skin type or, or ethnicity a patient is, it's hard to actually figure out sometimes is the pigment due to a lentigo or some pigment producing process or is this their normal pigment? So if you have a big enough piece of skin, you can figure it out. So here, here's a more normal-ish. It's not really normal. There are dying keratinocytes in here. And this is more abnormal than the other. So there's dilated blood vessels. And look at the epidermis. It's starting to detach. It's dying. See, there's a split here that's happening. The epidermis is, is losing its contact with the basement membrane, starting to lift off. Part of that is an artifact of processing, but probably this skin was ready to slough off. Um, and if it would have been left in the patient another couple of days, it would have like actually fallen off and made a big either blister or a, an open raw ulcer. And the epidermis is starting to get very pale. See how it's like that very pale pink color? And that's because it's undergoing necrosis. It's starting to die. And usually when we see that's a sign of ischemia, like thrombi. And in this case, it may be partially due to that, but the reason for the thrombi, I don't think is, you know, normally we see that and we think thrombi from like, you know, DIC, uh, you know, diffuse, uh, or, or um, other uh, thrombotic vasculopathies, systemic hypercoagulable state angioinvasive fungus, stuff like that. But here underneath, we have other stuff. Aside from the dilated vessel, we got tons of neutrophils, like abscess, basically. So over an abscess, you can have death and destruction of the skin. You can also see that we're beginning to have kind of vasculitic change in here, probably all secondary. And you know what? I never really talked about this, but look at that. Those look like little tiny possible fungi, right? But actually those are little strands of fibrin. At least I believe I see this sometimes. They're way too small to be fungal hyphae and they're too variable in size, right? There's little ones, a little bit bigger ones. Fungal hyphae are usually pretty uniform tubes and these are little th tiny fibers. So when fibrin first starts to form in a vessel, it makes little tiny fibers like this and then eventually it all smashes and congeals together. But early fibrin thrombus I have seen before and made it made me think about, oh, could this be fungal hyphae? But now you know. I think this is something that I, I never really see this in books or talked about. I've just noticed it in practice and thought, oh, that could be easy to get confused with fungus, but it's not. So let's go over to this piece over here. So we've got basically what looks like abscess. And then in addition to that, we're getting kind of vasculitic change, lots of vessels that are beginning to get fibrin thrombi in them. Right, like right there. And then let's go down further. And now. This tissue is dead. It's necrotic, almost all necrotic. Has kind of a bluish haziness to it. And I'm trying to find them, but oh, there. Let's see if we can get it to show up. Bacteria. Numerous cocci bacteria. In this case, there may be other bacteria present. So while this, depending on the clinical, this could be an abscess, but other things that could have this extensive necrosis with inflammation and numerous bacteria so numerous that they make colonies that are look i mean they're everywhere they're just this tissue is dying and being overrun by bacteria and so uh necrotizing fasciitis could look like this although you really don't want to make that diagnosis unless it absolutely fits clinically because it's a very serious diagnosis right and i've seen things that look like neck fasci but were just post-op you know surgical site infection that did not have you know gas production and did not have extension along the fascia um, and in this case, this skin was from the scrotum and the scrotum was basically be turning necrotic. So this is what's called Fournier's gangrene. And I, uh, I've, I've not done reading on it recently to understand the exact etiology of why it happens, but it's a very rapidly progressive, you know, infectious gangrenous process in the scrotum, unfortunately, which is, of course, a terrible sight to have that happen and um, can be a really serious and, uh, and severe problem uh, for patients. So that's what's happening here. Necrosis, tons of neutrophils, bacterial colonies, secondary death of the epidermis, 
and in the clinical context, Fournier's gangrene.